Translation, he said, we are here at Marché Jean Talon in Montreal, where we're going to pick up some ingredients and then head back to Dino's, where he's going to make us his most infamous vegan dessert. A big, fat, juicy cannoli. Baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> Know the Dino, we're following the Dino, wherever he may go. Oh, <laughs> man, I miss you. It's been a really long time since we last saw each other. I know. Last time we saw each other, I got kicked off of MasterChef. <laughs> Are you Dino? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, this is like cheap night. This is my show, Dino. <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Look at these amazing strawberries. <laughs> do you see? Okay, do you see these strawberries? This is how little strawberries should actually be. Not these monsters that we get back in the states. This should be petite, petite and sweet. Dino, you have something in your pocket. Do you want me to get it for you? Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful. See, this is me and her culture in a glass. Can we lay inside and we'll be on display? Oh my god. <laughs> So like, I want to buy that tiny little spaghetti. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's his favorite. I think I... <laughs> okay, so Dino, we're here at this beautiful market, and I want to know, when you're shopping here as a professional chef, what are you looking for when you have an abundance of ingredients like this? I look for adventure. I try to find an ingredient I've never worked with before, a new spice, and I just like to play around with it, take it home and kind of cook with it, see what it tastes like, see what it does. I want to create a new dish that no one's ever tried, no one's ever had, no one's ever made. I always want to come up with something new, and that's like my biggest passion is just creating different shit. This is gorgeous. Wow. I want my living rooms to look like this. Menthol. So can we crush the tips of your cannoli and choose if they want to be regular or menthol? Exactly. You cool. could even roll it up in a joint. <laughs> so, like I've never heard of this. What is this? It's called Sweet Gale Merik Bolnier. Whoa. It's almost like a no, berry. It kind of looks like juniper almost. See, that would add a very flowery flavor. It's being garnished in flowers, just like you're eating a flower itself. But this flower tastes kind of nasty, so. <laughs> it's a little perfume. -y. Cannoli by Estee Lauder. <laughs> I personally am not vegan. If anything, I'm kind of like the antithesis of vegan. Like I love meat, I love charcuterie, I love dairy. As a pastry chef, it's really hard to be strictly vegan because we oh, yeah. use so much cream and butter and you know, and you know, I'm sitting here eating poutine and I hope that doesn't offend you. Well see, I told you to eat that poutine. <laughs> I took you to the place. That's true. It's delicious. Yeah. I've had it. I'm curious, like, how would you convince somebody like me, who is so strongly the other side of not being vegan, to maybe consider becoming vegan, or even maybe just cutting back on the amount of animal product that we we consume? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not here to convince anyone to go vegan. I'm not going to force you to do something you don't want to do. I talking to another meat eater, I love meat and dairy more than anybody. I mean, I grew up in a, a Sicilian family where we eat nothing but meat and seafood. Every Sunday, it's like a meat fest. We have lamb, we have beef, we have pork. What, the thing that non-vegans don't really understand because vegan food, most vegan food out there, tastes like complete shit. Yeah. And then you have all these, pla these places trying to make like mock meats, like fake shrimp, fake beef, like, I don't really care too much for that. You know, it's not like, yeah, I'm, I'm missing the way the shrimp feels all gritty and you fucking rubbery. Eat. Yeah. Rubbery. I miss the <laughs> taste of shrimp. Yeah. So I want to create the best flavor profile that you can for for pretty much anything. I want to respect the ingredients of which they are, like vegetables. They eat. Vegetables are always a side. 
the, the shit broccoli, the shit carrots that you get on the side of your filet mignon, they never put any flavor to it. So people always think of vegetables as just nothing. You have to offer it in a way where people are like, oh my god, this is delicious. What the hell is this? Make the vegetable the star Make as the if it were the protein. Exactly. Yeah. And there's so many other things out there that, that can actually complement the taste of meat. As a vegan, I have to consistently eat non-vegan things sometimes that I've never tried before. Because right. I want to be able to recreate that flavor for someone who's trying to switch. And in order to actually be able to get those flavors, you can't just make the shit up. You can't just like imagine what they taste like. You have to get in there. You have to try it. Yeah. It's that sacrifice that I've made many times as a vegan, eating things I don't want to eat. So I, I actually think making vegan desserts might be more difficult than making vegan savory. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm really, really excited to see what you're going to be doing and how you're going to interpret a cannoli, which you and I are both part Italian, is such a staple in our culture like you know that's a high bar to set <laughs> to meet as to vegan so I'm really excited to see what you're gonna Don't do to make it. you surely will be disappointed <laughs> I highly highly doubt that <laughs>here at Dino's lovely apartment here in Montreal. We went to the wonderful market and he picked up everything he needed and now he's gonna walk us through the steps on how to make a beautiful vegan cannoli. And I'm super excited. So usually um, to make the shell you need eggs. For vegans we use egg replacer. But Calista's gonna show me how to make a uh, aquafaba. Aquafaba, yeah. So aquafaba is a really cool vegan substitute. And like I said, I'm not vegan, but I have to make a lot of vegan cakes for clients and stuff as a pastry chef. There's this really cool trick where you can take the liquid of canned garbanzo beans, so aquafaba, and you basically put it in a stand mixer like we have back here. Yeah, so it does kind of come out a little bit of that bean, like chickpea flavor, just to t like the ever so slightest, you know, flavor of that, but the sugar's gonna help, it's gonna sweeten it up, um, cause you do, cause when you're making a meringue, the sugar does help stabilize the, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a little, little drug bag of goodies. Oh, yeah. it's <laughs> and it's thicker. starting, it's starting to look like egg whites, right? So what we're checking is we're just gonna kinda dip the, I don't wanna say dip the tip, and I'm not gonna give you anything to work with here. Uh, we, we dip the whisk into it, and then you're just gonna turn it upside down, and you see how that little peak kind of just falls really quickly, that's at still a really soft peak. So Dino needs it at a medium peak, half staff, for his recipe. So we're gonna, dip, we're gonna whip it a little bit more, just because that's what Dino likes. Dino always gets what Dino wants. Stiff. <laughs> half staff. <laughs> oh, pretty. Oh, look at that. All right, perfect. See that? See that peak? It's got that little bit of a droop but it's still, you know, standing up on its own. So this, I would say this is that medium. All right, so we're gonna take gluten-free flour. I don't measure anything. Whoa, hold up. Did you just tell a pastry chef that you don't measure anything? I get that, I get that. Ooh, I just got so much anxiety. <laughs> it's gonna work. Okay, I trust you. So we're gonna use a little bit of vegan butter because regular cannoli dough needs butter. Room temperature, so you could uh, fold it into the actual dough. So we won't have to add as much sugar, but the point of the sugar being in the cannoli shell is to help it sort of get that crust, that crunch, because the sugar burns. I use white wine because my grandmother says so. So we're just gonna try to get the texture right. Are you looking for it to almost kind of be like crumbly, like a like a pie dough? It's really crumbly, it's very temperamental, especially with the gluten-free flour. It kind okay. of falls apart, so you gotta make sure you're really careful with it. So what are you adding now? So I usually do espresso powder. So you were the first vegan master chef winner Correct. ever so but obviously on the show it you can't just cook strictly vegan was that kind of like a moral conflict for you to be having to handle meats and animal products that you usually don't use in your everyday life not at all because during the challenges itself um they're gonna do meat anyway right and i always figure if somebody's gonna eat meat i want to make sure that animal is respected and made in the best possible way cool so that's competition, you know, like, I had to do that for the vegans. It was really big uh, yeah. sacrifice. A little more sugar just because. That's the most Italian broke thing you can ever do. <laughs> so we want it really thin, but not too thin because these things crumble very easily. So uh -huh. we're gonna try to see if we can get... <laughs> so we got 
We're gonna try two out. One testa <laughs> and one to fill. Because knowing me, I'm gonna fuck the first one up. Make sure to work with lots of oh, look you see that? You see that? Crumble. Forget about it. <laughs> Get that shit out of here. Let's try this out. Perfect. Let's test a little bit of this dough in the fryer just to make sure it's perfect temp. Oh, look at that. That's yeah, that's staying together really well. You don't want to put that on a towel or a paper towel usually. Is that crunchy enough for you? Yeah, you let it sit for a while, it actually gets crispier over time. Alright, so for the filling, we're gonna use a usually for a cannoli filling you use mascarpone and regat, but none of those are vegan, so we're gonna use a vegan cream cheese. So you wanna add a little bit of salt. Of course, always. We're gonna add little by little sugar to taste. You don't want the filling to be super sweet, because like a classic cannoli is actually not sweet at not all. Not too sweet. It's very yeah. uh, zesty, actually. <laughs> we're going to use, uh, what are these, dates? Yes. We're going to use dates <laughs> <laughs> to sweeten it up a little bit. So you can use either almond milk or hazelnut. I actually like the flavor mm. of this. Little by little, you don't want to go too over. You don't want to make it too soft. I should have used a bigger bowl for this. <laughs> this is so we switched to a bigger bowl because I'm an idiot. <laughs> So you are adding a little bit of... A little bit of lemon okay. juice. Yeah, my grandmother's favorite was using uh, blood oranges mm. for the zest and the juice. Dark chocolate cocoa powder. A little bit of that. Oh, interesting. Ooh, that smells like, like spearmint to me. Which makes sense, yeah, menthol. I've had a couple menthol cigarettes in my life. Oh, cigarette. <laughs> With plating, you, you kind of want to treat it like like an art canvas. You just want to make it look real beautiful. You want to aesthetically please them and then make sure that the flavor's there. Kind of tell the story through, you know, how you create the whole thing. When you usually plate, you want to include all the things that go into it. Well, people eat with their eyes first, so naturally. Always. And then since we put a little bit of this acai powder in there. That's a really pretty color contrast. Cool, so you have the aquafaba in a piping bag. Just to add a little something, right? That's really cute. It looks like little clouds. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful, Dino. Thank, Thank you so much. Of course, you. only you would just like come into a kitchen and just whip it up and like make that. Like that would take me like months of planning. How about we make a little bet? Oh. What are you thinking? If it's the best vegan dessert you've ever had. Okay. The best. The best. That's a high bar. You have to get a baby doll tattoo. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I see that bet. I'm gonna give you a little view. Okay. Merci. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna give Dino's vegan cannoli a taste and see if it lives up to the hype. All right. I got a lot riding on this, so we'll see. I don't wanna, it's so beautiful, I don't wanna destroy it. Looks like I'm getting a tattoo. Look Baby up a spot. Dog. Look up a spot. All right. Cool. <laughs> You're fucking crazy. <laughs> All right, we're at the Tattoo Lounge on St. Laurent in Montreal. And I'm a woman of my word, so we're going to head inside and I'm going to get my baby doll tattoo. Let's go. Just got a uh, Dino's infamous tagline, Baby Duel. Baby Duel. I sound more like Christopher Walken than Dino. 